Has Auburn locked in a visit with a player that could change the offense in 2023? Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining me as he does every single Monday, Lindsey Crosby, writer at AuburnDaily.com, as well as the host of Locked On MLB Prospects. Lindsey, have the Auburn Tigers locked in an official visit with a player that can make an incident back in 2023? and really change the impact of the offense. They have locked in an official visit with former TCU wide receiver Jordan Hudson, a former five-star player according to On3, and a player that could be very, very electric in regards to catching everything and also the ability to stretch the field. Yeah, a thing we've talked about now all spring was that you were looking for bigger-bodied receivers on the outside, guys who could... Uh, make plays in space, guys who were experienced, who could come in and make an impact. And uh, you brought in Nick Mardner, who is a big body, but uh, other than that, you didn't make an impact in the room. And it was a lot of counting on growth from existing guys, counting on better quarterback production, which mm. you will probably get because the scheme's going to be better than that last thing they did. Yeah, sure. Uh, but bringing in somebody like this who has played at a high level, I mean, for a good school, nothing against Cincinnati, but played for a high level for a good school, it does yeah. nothing but raise the ceiling of this offense, provided, of course, that he actually commits and comes to Auburn. Yeah, yeah. And once again, we talk about this with John Garcia on Cruton Thursdays all the time. It's like, okay, you know, some people may say TCU, but they, they played for a national championship last year. They didn't show up, but they, they earned the right to, to, you know, play in the game. But also, you know, you just look at all the schools that want him. George is on that list. And that should be enough to be like, okay, this is probably somebody that we want at Auburn. So his official visit will be April 28th through the 30th. And like I said, a former five-star player that could have an instant impact. Parts of this, though, I think are interesting, Lindsay, because he doesn't check all the boxes that you typically would like to see with Hugh Freeze. You mentioned big-bodied. He's six one one ninety. And when I hear 61190, I typically think of, okay, a guy that can probably play a little bit of both, probably needs to rely on his route, route running because he's not particularly long. Mm -hmm. And I think he's a good route runner based on the, the limited film that I've been able to see in some of his pro football focus grades and, and the like. But at 61, you kind of think, okay, he's probably a little bit of both. He can probably yeah. play slot. He can probably play outside. That's not really what we've seen with Jordan's um, production so far. Last year, he played 215 snaps on offense. Two were in the backfield, which I assume is motion. Yeah. Um, 18, just 18 were in the slot. And 195 were out wide. 190 of those were on the right side. Then obviously the other five were on the left. So, I mean, this guy has primarily been used in his career as an outside wide receiver. I think some of the skill sets and pieces of his game that he has, Lindsay, translates to being productive at the slot. But I do think that that's something that's kind of worth noting because normally Hugh Freeze outside wide receivers are what? They're huge. They're like Nick Martiner. They're like Camden Brown. They're like, um, you know, Landon King, what we kind of hoped that, that would hit, turn into and um, that we may not be getting to that point. We'll certainly have to wait and see. But yeah, so th there, there's... There's a lot to like about this and the fact that he's a former five-star, Lindsay. I don't mm -hmm. think there's any question about that. But the fit is interesting to me. Yeah, and it's something, for me, I this kind of feels like the compromise, right? Like, in a perfect world, they're getting that big-body, super-experienced guy who can come in, who's NFL-bound in a year, but he wants to burn us his production in the system. This feels like a transition thing. It's a guy that maybe doesn't have all of the perfect... Uh, physical archetype of what you're looking for, but he's played in that position. He's played that role. Um, and for all we know, maybe a little bit of time in SEC weight room helps out as well as far as some of the size and stuff. The, the, maybe. The wellness kitchen and things like that. But it very much feels like, like you go and you look at the kind of guys that Hugh Freeze had at Ole Miss, and then you look at the wide receivers he had at Liberty, and it's like 
he was trying to do the same things and the the athletes weren't quite to the same caliber at Liberty. This feels like one of those situations, like in the spring portal, you're not going to find that guy that checks every single box, but you can get a guy who's done this job in a similar type of offense. And he checks enough boxes where they feel good about bringing him in. You know what this feels like to me? Okay. And if he were to commit to Auburn and I'm not ready to pick, you know, I don't know where he's laying. I don't think he knows yet because he's got a lot of visits coming up and a lot of schools interested, which is a great time. But, you know, the timing of when he will pick his team um, and just his size and makeup, it sounds like a Coy Moore with a little bit more upside. Coy Moore is currently 6'1". Like 198, 198, so a little bit bigger. But, I mean, yeah. they're similar. And Coy Moore's ability was like, oh, this guy can do a little bit of both. Um, so he seems like a Coy Moore that's been graded higher throughout his career up to this point. That that's kind of what it feels like to me. And I I do think there I would take it a heartbeat. Oh yeah, I mean that's the, that's not something that you can afford to say. Like in this room, you can't afford to say no. We're good. We don't need that. And this is always right. something you need to bring in that talent. I do like the fact that also he is a former five star. And so if it's a, a scenario where you take a five-star who, for reasons that we're, we don't know, uh, is leaving the place where he committed to, and if he comes here and performs well enough to get drafted, then the story becomes, well, there's a five-star receiver that Auburn got into the NFL. Mm -hmm. Because the one knock that this school has had, I want to say we've had like 13 five-stars and whatever – the last 10 years or whatever. Not and enough. And like four of them have gotten drafted. It's like bottom 10, it's like bottom three in all of uh, power five schools behind like Texas and Oklahoma. That's it. Like we're number three uh, on the bad end of this. And so it does give you that kind of thing as well. If Oklahoma can claim Jalen, we can claim this kid. If, we, if it works out, that's obviously way down the road, but it does help start to turn that reputation of, they don't develop wide receivers. It does help turn that around. Yeah, instantly. And, and with the portal, you know, I mean, we kind of said the same thing with basketball about a basketball. What did I just say about basketball with, with Bruce Pearl, you know, with, with kind of going out and get Walker uh, Kessler. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you, you were able to go get a guy like Janai Broom. And so we'll, we'll see if that happens. We'll see if that happens again. Uh, all right. Coming up, Auburn had a player this weekend that could compete for a starting job in 2023 if he were to come here. Lindsay, we'll talk on that in just a second right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. And there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel. as America's number one sports book. Lindsay, you are the editor-in-chief of Bravestoday.com. And currently, even after getting swept... By the Houston Astros. The Atlanta Braves still the odds on favorite to win the World Series at plus 550. The Astros and Dodgers right behind them at plus 700. You like those odds? You like those odds for the Bravos? I like those odds. That feels like despite them having the uh, those lowest payoff, and obviously it feels like they're the most likely to do it. And so if it's me, I'm going to FanDuel.com slash locked on and putting some money on the Braves. Yep, and Ronald Acuna's odds to win MVP keep getting better and better. They're currently at plus 390. I'd go ahead and get into that because it's just going to get, um, I think, more and more clear. <laughs> I mean, he's, two, he's, two lead off games, he's batting over 600. Two lead off a game. Yeah, and, oh, and he leads all of baseball and steals. Yeah, so uh, be sure to check that out. You can read about that at bravestoday.com, but also head over to fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. Place your first bet. You got up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. Lindsay, this weekend, Auburn hosted a player that could be uh, fighting for a starting job in 2023. We've talked about him a ton. Probably the, probably the transfer portal target we've talked about the most. But Tulsa offensive lineman Jaden Muskrat was in town this weekend. He's got relationships. Um, you know, his head coach a year ago is Auburn's offensive coordinator, Philip Montgomery, 1L. He also was the opposite tackle uh, from Dylan Wade. And so you got to think there's going to be a relationship there as well. 
This is a guy that that I like a lot because he makes your roster better. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it like really raises the ceiling of what you bring as an offense in 2023, but I think it potentially raises the floor. And with that, you, you take him in a heartbeat. That's the point I was going to make was you're not, you don't have better odds of making the college football playoff or winning the SEC or anything like that. But if Jaden Muskrat joins this Auburn Tigers roster, one, you have another option that you can plug and play at a tackle position if something were to happen. So you have that depth. It's think of this uh, very similar to you bring in an edge player last year from. Western Kentucky? Western Kentucky, yes. And then somebody goes down, Bragg steps up, and he becomes your number two starter. And so the the defense doesn't have that much of a drop-off. That is what Jaden Muskrat is at worst on offense. And then at best, he can potentially mix in uh, some of the the interior options, try to figure out what's going to happen at guard. Uh, He is a redshirt sophomore. So you theoretically have him for up to, what, two more years, three more years? Yeah. Then on the COVID year and all that. So definitely something, again, I said this last time, he's been offered since then. He's from Bentonville, Arkansas. So we have to we have to kind of keep him away from, um, from Fayetteville. Mm-hmm. But the fact that he took a visit here, Philip Montgomery, his, uh, his fellow tackle, you have to feel good about our chances of getting Jaden Musk right on campus. Yeah, and it certainly feels like the Auburn football program is trending up right now. And I think over the last 12 months for Arkansas, it's trended down a little bit. Love Sam Pittman, but it's just not as good as it was 12 months ago in Fayetteville. Yeah, and and so I I like what you said there. I think worst case, he's the third tackle, unless Xavier Miller kind of puts a little bit more together. But right now, I'd rather have Muskrat going into 2023 right now than Mm -hmm. Miller going to 2024. That may change just because it sounds like Miller just needs a little bit of technique work. And yeah, it may be, maybe you bring in a dude and even if you don't believe it, go to Tate Johnson, go to Connor Lou, like, Hey, this, this guy's competing with you. Like get better, get better. And, and, And I love that. And it also sets up an interesting path to the future, which you mentioned. He, you know, he, he's, this isn't a grad transfer type situation, but Muskrat, Xavion Miller, and then Tyler Johnson, the true freshman, that was a great win by Hugh Freeze and the oh, yeah. staff uh, that is going to enroll in a few weeks. You know, I don't think he's a he's a you know f- true freshman that I don't think we're expecting to play as a true freshman. But all of a sudden, you're gonna you're gonna lose Gunner after this year. Dylan Wade, you're not necessarily gonna lose, but if he's as good as he looked in spring, I don't think the NFL is off the table by any stretch of the imagination. So all of a sudden, that kind of gives you guys you can slot in and compete behind them with Jaden Muskrat, Xavion Miller, Tyler Johnson at tackle, and then you got Connor Liu that's going to be a kind of a piece and in, 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 you know, in the interior offensive lineman, and then you can kind of transfer out and get some guys to come in after that. So I, I like how he would theoretically stack the roster. And we've talked about this before, Lindsay, and this is why I think it raises the floor of this team because like if Dylan Wade or Gunnar Britton go down at the current state of the roster, like this isn't good. Like that would be a tragic, a tragic situation. You're in trouble. Yeah. And I'm not saying Muskrat would come in and be as good as those guys, but the drop off with him is a lot better than, than the guys currently on the roster. Yeah. He graded out uh 61.2 last year, uh, kind of even pass block grade and run block grade. So like, yeah. you know what you have, He's a well-rounded it's, player. It's slightly better pass block, right? Uh, it's sixty-one point eight pass block, sixty-one point three run block. So it's oh, it's wow. it's a negligible okay. difference. Yeah, it's a neg- Got it. weirdly his overall at sixty-one point two lower than both of those. So there's some other stuff factored into that. But the point is, uh, he gives you 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 touched on this. What I like about this is not only the depth at tackle, but you can go to those interior guys. Uh, to your Tate Johnsons and things like that. And to paraphrase Atlanta Braves third base coach, third base coach Ron Washington, if you don't like it, play better. Yikes. This is an opportunity to push them and like, hey, you're not just competing with one another because when you're competing with one other guy, you have a thing in the back of your head, hey, if he gets hurt, job's mine. I'm good. Right. No, we've got multiple options we think can start at guard. 
Jade Muskrat's going to compete at guard, going to back up tackle, gives you an interior guy you like in Connor Lou, uh, a, a tackle in Jade Muskrat. You've got options. And that's, I think that's the biggest thing for this Auburn team is just you have to have more options than you had. And then again, like I said, multiple years potentially going forward. Right. Right. It seems like they've made Muskrat a priority. And so far, small sample size, but so far, Lindsay, when a player spends a lot of time in front of Hugh Freeze and the staff and they are made a priority, good things have happened from the Auburn point of view. They get them. We'll see. We will see. As we record this Sunday night, Lindsay, there is another transfer that just arrived on campus, and hopefully we will hear more about him over the coming days. But the fit just makes sense. More on him in just a moment right here on Locked On Auburn. I want to encourage you to join the Locked On Auburn Discord. It is free. All you have to do is click the link in the episode description down below. Auburn is hosting Cincinnati linebacker Edge Jaheim Thomas. Few sites are listing him just as an edge. I saw a few sites listing him as defensive end. That doesn't appear to be entirely true. He did line up there, but the vast majority of his snaps um, have been as a box linebacker, which is fine. Auburn kind of needs that too. I think yeah. they've got some dudes that they like that they brought in, but still, I, I'll take another body in that room as well. But Lindsay, you know, this guy's 6'4", 245. I think you and I actually talked about him last Monday. This mm -hmm. is a player that as soon as he entered the portal, I was told to keep an eye out for him. I think the staff likes him. I think he likes the staff. And I think they were both kind of very quickly engaging in conversation as soon as he entered the portal, which is typically a good sign. And so what he did at Cincinnati last year he played 297 snaps as a box linebacker, and he played 125 snaps um, edge at the edge spot. Listed at right outside linebacker, left outside linebacker at pro football focus. And he graded higher as a pass rusher than anything else with an 84.1. And he's a redshirt junior with a COVID year because he played in 2020. So once again, this is a guy that you can say, hey, all right, you're probably going to back up Elijah McAllister and Keldrick Falk. We'll see how Keldrick develops. And then it'll be you and Keldrick next year. If you want to use him as that edge piece. Still a versatile dude. He played a lot of spots for Cincinnati. So there's there's a lot to like about this. Yeah. And looking at some of the PFF grades and things like that, a lot of what he does, I mean, he's he's more well-rounded than, than you might initially think hearing, oh, he's 6'4", 245. You kind of pigeonhole him into that. He's a bigger guy who's going to rush the passer. Uh, rush defense, defensive grades overall are all pretty decent. The only place he doesn't grade out fantastically is pass coverage, something where he got 131 pass coverage snaps. Wasn't necessarily, I think he had like a 51 grade. But other than that, grades nice. out well on pass rushing, on rush defense, on tackling, overall defense generated. Co coverage grades for like non-DBs are always really interesting. It's always small sample size. Like looking at this, um, 10 targets on the year. The guys he was covering in 131 snaps got a total of 10 targets and caught six passes for 58 yards. And so he's he's marked down on his grade. He got, it's a sample size of 10 plays in essence. Mm -hmm. And I you bet know. a lot of those, I mean, he played a lot of box linebackers. So in a lot of those, you're, you're covering a running back out of the backfield. Some of those could have been easy swing passes. They like it's almost impossible to cover unless you're just really on top of it. So I don't know. Some of that's kind of iffy. Um, unless you're a DB, but well, it is what it is. Yeah. And either way, it just it just feels like he has more versatility. And this is the guy that you can plug him in wherever you need him, versus mm -hmm. how a lot of your guys are kind of pigeonholed into one specific role, or this is the thing that they do well, and that's kind of the one tool in their toolbox. He feels like he's a kind of a jack of all trades. You can use him a lot of different places. He's not going to be your first and there's option a chance. for a lot of these right. things, but right. he's going to be an option that can get by. And he he gives you a lot of versatility schematically because you don't have to sub him in and out from package to package or from from uh, set to set, situation to situation. That is a good point because 
I think they want to do some stuff where there's two jacks on the field, and all of a sudden that kind of makes it a little bit easier if you want to allow him to do that as well. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know. There's a lot to like about Jaheim Thomas, and even more so, there's a lot to like about Jaheim Thomas potentially at Auburn with Ron Roberts. And so I also think there's a way they could go to him and say, you're better as a pass rusher than anything else. Like, come rush the passer here because there's a lot of unproven – guys is in regards to rushing the passer on this defense. I think that's going to be the weakness of this team, honestly. What, what defensive player, if you go to him and say, hey, we want to give you more chances to hit quarterbacks, what, what defensive player is going to say, no, I'm good? Come on. Yeah, and, and hey, if you can figure it out, we look like geniuses and you make a lot of money. So I, I like it. I, I like the fit um, for sure. I, I think Cincinnati... I think Cincinnati players are usually pretty decent at this point. They've done a good job building that program. So we'll see. We will see. But he's quick. Seems like he's quick. Got a good first step. And uh, there's a lot to like. How fast is he? He's, he's quick. I think he's quick. Yeah. He's quick. He's quick. Yeah, he's All quick. right. All right. Uh, cool. Anything else you're passionate about regarding transfer portal stuff before we wrap it up? Uh, no, I, th I think I'm good. I'm, I'm, re I'm really excited to see what happens in the rest of this window. It's been a slower portal season. Yeah. Uh, but... Reminder, a lot of guys, if you are a graduate transfer, if you are going to transfer as a grad student, you can enter the portal at any time. So when the portal closes, that is not it. If a guy graduates in May, he can then jump in the portal. You mm. can see, you could potentially be adding guys in May and June and July. So this is this is not it, folks. What's in the portal now is not all you have. It's yeah. going to be a lot of it. It's not all of it. A lot of guys graduate over the next two or three weeks, too or maybe a little longer than that, but a lot of people are going to graduate with the spring semester. So mm -hmm. that's worth noting too on both sides of it for us guys leaving and guys coming in. Lindsay, how can people check out everything you've got going on? I'm on Twitter at Crosby baseball, the Auburn baseball writing, Auburn daily.com, the Braves writing Braves today.com and the podcast locked in and movie prospects available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Follow me on socials at Z Blackerby and all my written work at auburndaily.com. We will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked On Auburn.